Are Israelites Canaanites? Are Israelites Canaanites? Now we only have a limited amount of time right here just to address this basic, this basic, um, it's a question, but it's also very an insult. It's like they say the cover up is worse than the crime. Ones are now trying to state out there among the consensus of some pseudo intellectuals and pseudo scholarship, they're trying to state, and they even thrown in DNA and all of this and that, saying that the Israelites, the Israelites of the Bible, were really the Canaanites. So are the Israelites the Canaanites? We put the LOL right there and SMH shaking my head. No, we're going to shake their heads right here. It's, it's interesting when people. When people try to say that the Israelites are the Canaanites. So we see this particular line of uh, pseudo, pseudo scholarship, right? Pseudo intellectual, pseudo scholarship going out there to say that, well, based on the consensus today, the Israelites of the Bible really are the Canaanites. I'm sure ones and ones amongst the brothers and sisters I've come across this. But here, here, what was interesting in the most recent Torah portion reading and feeding known as Ikeb. Ikeb. Very interesting. Ikeb from Akab and Ya'ikob. Ya'ikob, Jacob, the heel grabber. So Ikeb means like, if because the idea is consequently, it shall follow on the heels of. So in the previous Torah reading and feeding that began at 712 Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 12 and going through the reading and feeding our in the weekly Torah portion they're called the, the mana the angels bread Rastafari sabbatical study for the previous sabbatical strong Ike the 46 Rastafari sabbatical study when we get to chapter 9 Something very, very interesting, and this is what caused me to share this with a few of the Chabarim right here. Are the Israelites Canaanites? LOL. SMH. It's interesting when people try to say that the Israelites, biblical scripture Israelites, are the Canaanites. <laughs> what do you call it again? Cognitive dissonance? So the true, the truth sense, right? We're going to make the reference to Deuteronomy chapter 9. The truth sense is that and we're just writing in the simple text in the English, anglicized, Jehovah, Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, Yahweh, that Jehovah, he who be, we be, Eloheinu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be he, blessed be the name, called in anglicized, Jehovah, already had dealings with these nations. Even in the scripture, in the narrative, in HaTorah, the first five books ascribed to Moshe, it brings us out. That Jehovah, the true good, the true God, Ha Elohim, Allahayim, Ha Allahayim, Hailehim, that the power, Yahuwah, Yod, Hey, Wahe, Yahweh, Hey, that he already had dealings with these nations, other nations. And so they knew him, but they went after their craziness, as many are going after some pseudo intellectual craziness. Yes, Garfield was speaking about you too. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> they also go on to say that, um, oh, okay, I think I was talking to texting this Yahweh, you know, as a Yahweh, Yahweh, Yah, Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, Yahweh. They say that Yahweh. Right or Jehovah Yahweh, as they say, and Elohim Ha Alahayim Ha'ilahim are you know they say the Canaanite gods. Right, so we're saying that Yahweh and Elohim are not so-called Canaanite gods, or Yahweh is not Esau's god or, or the god of Esau in that sense. Right, but the true God power, the true God power. So we're going to follow up on this subject matter right here, 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 but it's basically to, um, as one brother in would say, to like kind of put a fork in it, right? Because really forked up what they're trying to do. They're trying to say that the Israelites are Canaanites. We said this before. Many ones know some of our old podcasts and, and, and even some of the previous uh, vlogs and videos we've done over the last decade or two. We have addressed this before, even gave um, the biblical nations, the breakdown from the biblical nations into the approximate modern nations. And what we have is the so-called white, so-called white, white people, or white European nations. Very interesting look up would be to look up Canaanite and white people. 
Look up Canaanite and white people. Right now, is it just us that say that you know the the Canaanites are the progenitors? We say the the modern Canaanites could be considered the white people, also in the merchant sense. There's also the merchant sense. Oh, pirate! Yes, they rob I. So we have the Canaanites in the merchant sense, even in I think it's Zechariah in the prophet Zechariah. No more shall the Canaanite be in the house of Yahweh. Hey of Yahweh Yahweh no longer and then that's brought out as merchant the merchant isn't it interesting the merchant and then the connection with Babylon right and the merchant city right but here 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 let's just touch on this right here for one more books let's touch on some books here we're gonna touch on some books right here now this particular book LOJ Society this is a reprint it's a kind of a compilation and a reprint right from um, one named um, William Hamilton Stewart and I was very pleasantly surprised when I read his book it was on a couple of pages and we put together a compilation you know for the LOJ the line of Judah for the the college studies you know a college study a kind of a point of reference a reference book we had it published on a few sites I think Lulu and a couple of other create space so we got into a little bit of trouble here because you know ones don't want the truth to get out there now if one seek to get a copy check out the description the link you know send one of the text only and we can see what we can arrange for once to get a copy it's, it's a small book but it's what it contains because we already had known that the so-called Canaanites Right, are the progenitor of the so-called Indo-European, let's put it like that, the white Indo-European nations. Let me say this once again, that the biblical Canaanites, just the Canaanites come from Ham, from Ham, from Ham. And we're going to prove that not only were we saying this from our biblical studies, even the Jehovah Witness, Jehovah Witness some years ago in one of their publications, they said that the black, the black race is not descended from the curse of so-called Ham because there was no, no curse on Ham or Kam and later on people say Kemet. There was no curse in that sense on Ham or Kam or Kem or Kemet. But the curse in the Bible was the curse on Canaan. And they even said in that particular article, we showed it before, but we'll follow up and get into more details, you know, and just show ones the evidence. A Jehovah Witness article that even pointed out some research they had done to prove that the black people were not descended from this white supremacist curse of, of Ham, devil's philosophy that had been in circulation for 400 plus years to help, you know, pacify even white folks who were a little bit, you know, upset about what they were doing to black folks. But the pastors and preachers, old pirate, yes, they rob I, you know, they went about to basically say that, well, the reason why we're doing this to the black people, because black people are under this curse, and they call it the curse of Ham. And they said the Bible speaks about the curse of Ham, but the Bible does not speak of the curse of Ham. You know, when Robeno Yeshua HaMoshia, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, says that, you know, he said that ye, so you all love your, your father, the devil. He was a liar from the beginning. No truth is in him. There's no truth in them. They said that the curse of Ham was biblical. They take us to Genesis chapter 9. But when you read in Genesis chapter 9, it doesn't say nothing about no curse on Ham. It says the curse of Canaan. Now, that's a very interesting connection right there, right? You see how they play the, the religious, the was, white Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, so-called counterfeit Christian three-card Monty game. You know what I mean? You know, the cups game. You know, it's under this cup, it's under that cup, it's under this card, under that card. You know, it's a switcheroo, the old switcheroo. So the Bible speaks on the curse of Ham, no. It speaks of the curse of Canaan, yes. And so coming across the Jehovah Witness article that we had in a previous vid, we had got in the channel, you know, kind of taken down because of such truth, right? Just such truth. That's why when you get this, share this, save it, back it up, you know, redistribute it. Yes. So now, Aryan origins and kinship. In this particular book, and we'll go through more detail, but we have a limited time, record time right here on this particular device that we're recording. So we're trying to just, you know, just basically put in the first word on are Israelites Canaanites? Are the biblical Israelites the Canaanites? No. The Israelites, we could say by and large, are black people. 
historically, biblically, scripturally, right? However, the Canaanites are the progenitor, we could say, of the white race. Now, even though the father of Canaan was black, we know that DNA proves that the so-called white gene, right, the so-called like white DNA and certain white genes are recessive. Black genes are dominant. Thus, even in the manifestation of the melanation, the melanin, the blackness, so forth and so on. And think about it, that during the 400 years plus period of time, what was the main motivation of white supremacy? Is the evil of these black people, right? Because we kept on with color. Remember, even in the Bible, it said that the sign that would be given, right, to Moses, the whole hand in the bosom right and then taking the hand out the bosom and it turned the white and leprous as snow right and then he put his hand into his bosom again and turned back to his other his other flesh right and the so-called leprosy right the mitzora the leprosy that's described in the scripture matches a recessive skin at least in its manifestation a recessive skin disease and disorder even within um shemot called exodus it speaks about how Yahweh Elohim would put a he said he would put the plague of leprosy in a in a bite in a house right within that land of Canaan the land of Canaan and this author here William Hamilton Stewart there's a part of it I'm paraphrasing here but we're going to get to the exact we're going we're going to quote him because when we found his work we said Chan we knew we were correct from our research but then to find certain pro white scholars and pro-white people who even admit that yes the Canaanites are white people so we have the Jehovah Witness right Jehovah Witness saying that the Canaanites are white people right we have the DNA and also genetics that says that white people come from black people so we can see it right there in the Bible biblically from Genesis chapter 9 right and then to have Hamilton Stewart right here also speaks about he says he doesn't know how you know so many of his fellow white people could be into this Judeo-Christian thing you know seeing that the Hebrews were dark-skinned were black people dark-skinned people who was running his people the Canaanites white people up and out of that land and he goes into even more detail you know cobbling certain scientific other historical evidence but basically what he's saying is that the Hebrews and the Israelites were black people so it's a it's somebody who's a pro-white guy Right, a pro-white guy, part of this whole Aryan and white, you know, I don't want to say white supremacist thing, that's even acknowledging on the record that the Canaanites were white people. Right? And then we're gonna show one more proof right here, here, here as well. Right? Here we have um Phoenician goddess. I mentioned her before. Now, this story of a Phoenician goddess is very, very interesting. People say, Well, Phoenician goddess. Yadin, I mean, what's up here? You know, goddess. Well, here's a, here's a story on this, just a brief overview. Years ago, on one of our old channels, maybe Ethiopian World Net or Ethiopian World, I think it was Ethiopian World, and, and also I think on the Rastafari Sabbatical, a few other places also had uploaded the video as well, right? Um, she had linked, I, either I linked her or she linked me and she was surprised. I think she came across one of our videos and she was surprised because she says, how is this? Because she must have looked at other videos and knew that we were, you know, more pro-black people or Israelite, Ethiopian, Hebrew, royal order because this is, this is our main, you know, the main rock, the foundation of our identity. We, the once lost, now found Bait Yisrael, the Beta Israel, the house of Israel, you know. But she was like, how do you know this? I was like, you know, what? And then I read through and we have some of the correspondence backed up. This was like several years ago, more than a decade ago. I think her channel down here, let's go down to the bottom of her channel right here. Her channel was 2008. So some of you know that we was broadcasting, I think this is around the time that Obama was about to come into office and everything like that. We was podcasting, you know, not podcasting actually. We were, you know, vlogging, uploading videos, you know, and teaching so forth and so on from all around that time. You can see that she joined YouTube, right, July 31st, 2008, right? So sometime either 2009, 2010, you know, between 2008 and maybe 2012 or so, where we had come across, you know, some of her you know information but she was surprised because we were saying that Canaanites are white people 
And she said, well, how do you know Canaanites are white people? And this is what caused me to be curious about who's this Phoenician goddess, you know? And then we went and checked out her channel, and this is on the about of her channel. Now, she says here, this channel provides information and videos about the Phoenicians. She says the Israelites, she puts Israelites there, right? Carthaginians, Lebanese, the Y DNA, and the Canaanite origin of the white race. You can go check this out. Phoenician goddess, the channel on the YouTubes. As we showed you, she joined YouTube July 31st, 2008. Now, she says Christianity here equals Phoenician invention. Right, and then she points to Phoenicia.org, XTN, right? She says, God, Jesus Christ was a Phoenician. He visits Phoenicia, Lebanon in 29 AD, Matthew 15, 21. 5,000 Phoenicians and Jews already converted to Christianity in 37 AD, Acts of the Apostles 4 and 4. Now, she begins off right there. So she's alleging that the God, Jesus, maybe she's talking about Caesar, Caesar Borgias. Maybe she's speaking about this, the Kaiser Borgia. She's not speaking about our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. So yes, we disagree with her on this right here, here, here. But ones would put this in. I don't think she has this there before, but she probably updated it. What we saw was this, right? What we saw was this right here. Let's just scroll this up. Hitto Phoenicians. Now there's something in the Bible that we'd like to share too with you. Hitto Phoenicians. Okay, let's do this right here because we have this on... Um, what they call it again, um, airplane mode, right? We're on the airplane mode. There's a Syro, Syro Phoenician woman, right? There's a Syro Phoenician woman. Let's go right here, here, here to my sword right here. My sword. We'll get back to drive out those nations, right? Um, let's go to Syro, Syro Phoenician, right? Boom. You see this right here? Look at this right here. Now, She's linking on her site, as you saw, you can rewind it if you need to. She's saying right here, now this same narrative we have here in Mark, right? This is Mark chapter 7, verse 26. This is right here just to dismiss all that Yeshua HaMoshiach wasn't a Phoenician, right? Jesus Christos, our black Lord and Savior, was not a Phoenician. But maybe Kaiser Borgia, Kaiser Cesare, Cesare Borgia, well, he was no doubt a Canaanite. Yeah, of course he was a Canaanite, right? He is their, their Canaanite Jesus Christ, right? Basically their whitewash. And counterfeit Christianity, no doubt, was a Phoenician invention. The counterfeit, that which came much later on, not the original, right? But anyway, right here, 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 in Mark chapter 7, it's going right here, Mark chapter 7, because there's a companion story, right, in the gospel, and that's in Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Do you know this particular story right here? Are you familiar with this? We're going to Matthew chapter 15, right? In Matthew chapter 15, what's the, notice, what, let's just read this right here, and, and we'll check with that. Mark chapter 7 verse 26. The woman was a Greek. A Greek. So Greeks were different than Israelites. It says to the Jew and to the Greek, right? You know that from the scripture. The Jews, the Yehudi, the Judahites, the Judeans, those black Jews who had returned in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, there was a difference. Even the Apostle Paul says, Right, his brothers, according to the flesh, to make a distinction between the people that he was going amongst to preach to first the Yehudi, the Jew, and then to the Gentile. We all know that. As I said, there's no difference between the Jew and the Gentile in Christ, in the faith, from a religious perspective on that level. Right? But they were different peoples, different nations. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician. Syro right there stands as an abbreviation for, for, for Syrian. Like we may say Afro, Afro-Asiatic, Afro, right? For Africa, or pointing out the blackness, the black aspect. So Syro-Phoenician means a Syrian-Phoenician woman by nation. Notice what it says, the woman was a Greek, a Syro-Phoenician by nation. So she was Greek, right? That means that she wasn't of Ham or Shem, but she was Greek, 
Now we know the original Greeks were also black peoples, right? In the originates, the original Romans were actually Etruscans, and we can see their wall paintings and the artifacts, right? But a serial Phoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil, uh-oh, the devil out of her daughter. So this is the narrative here of the woman with the devil possessed daughter, right? Yeshua and the serial Phoenician woman right the serial phoenician woman if we get into this a little bit more right here let's just click on this right here right and go to where it begins right here it begins right here in verse 24 this section and from thence he speaking of yeshua our black lord and savior jesus christ robeno our rabbi the rabbi of rabbis yeshua hamushia and he went into the borders of tyre and sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it. So Yeshua went someplace. He didn't want people talking about where he was at, right? But he could not be hid. Even though he tried to hide out, he could not be hid. People started talking, you know what I mean? Dry snitching on Robain, right? Verse 25, for a certain woman, a certain woman, it was a woman whose daughter, whose young daughter, whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet now here's what links right here so we first touched on the subtext and we now re read in the section to get the context of the supertext of the fullness here the woman was a greek and a serophoenician get that serophoenician so this distinguishes her from a judahite a yehudi a israelite by nation and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil, the devil, out of her daughter. But, check this out, but Yeshua said to her, now Yeshua right here, in today's way of speaking and understanding, Yeshua calls this woman a biatch. He calls her a, a bitch, a bitch, you know, female dog. No, we're going to prove it right here. But Yeshua said to her, let the children first be filled. So he's speaking about the children, the Bene Yisrael. Right? He's speaking about the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Let the lost sheep, like the lost black and brown people in America and the Caribbean, let them first be filled. For it is not meat to say it's not proper, it's not right, to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. So let's get this correct. This woman who is a Greek, a Syro Phoenician, a Syrian Phoenician by nation. But she's a Greek, just like many of the modern day Arabs, they have a lot of Greek blood because Alexander the Greek, the great, he went over there and did what he did. Historically, facts. So Yeshua said to her, let the children, the Bnei Yisrael, the children of Israel, first be filled. For it is not meat, it is not proper, it's not right to take the children's bread, the, the children of Israel's bread, as we have the manna, the bread, and to cast it, to throw it to dogs. This is Yeshua speaking right here. Red letter, red letter, red letter. Now she, the Greek woman, the Syrian Phoenician, the Syrian Phoenician woman by nation, she answered and said to him, Yes, Lord. Yes, Adon, Adoni, Adonai. Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table, where, where are the dogs? The dogs under the table. The dogs, on the, the do, dogs are under the table. They eat of the children's crumbs, the, tr the crumbs from the B'nai Yisrael, all right? Let's go to verse 29. And he, Adonai, our Lord, our Master, Robainu, our Rabbi, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, he said to her, for this saying, because you have said this thing, basically he says, listen, 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 woman, lady, whatever, I, I can't, I'm, I'm Almost like saying, I can't help you, right? Because first, let the children be filled. It's, it's not right to cast the children's bread to dogs. And she says, yes, Lord, you're right. You're right. It's not good to cast it. Feed the children. She says, feed the children, right? Feed the lost black sheep or the lost black people of Israel. Feed them, right? But, you know, the dogs under the table... They eat of the children's crumbs, the crumbs, the crumbs that fall off of the table. And Yeshua now responds to her and said, For this saying, go thy way, go your way, 
right? Remember, Yeshua is the way, the truth, and the life. But go your way. Go, 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 you know, you do you, right? The devil is gone out of thy daughter. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. You see it right here, here, here? And when she was come to her house, she found Diablos, the devil, gone out. And her daughter laid up on the bed. So her daughter was healed. So what are we saying right here? So Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, he had this encounter with a Greek, with a white woman. Right? He told the white woman plainly, you know, he gave her the 411 about what it be like. And she said yes. Basically, in a sense, he called, she admitted that she's a dog. Right? Biatch. That's what we said that Jesus, you know, it used to be the teaching back in the days that, you know, Jesus called a woman a bitch and said, no, he wouldn't do that. Well, what woman he called? This Greek woman, this Syrian Phoenician woman. But she acknowledged that, yes, the children must first be filled. That, yes, it is not right. She answered and said to him, yes, yay. She said, yes, Lord. Yes, Adoni, Adon, Adawan. Yet the dogs under the table, they eat of the children's crumbs. The crumbs that fall off of the table. And Yeshua said to her, For this saying, go thy way, Diablos, the devil, Hasatan, the Satan, is what? Is cast out. Right? The, 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 the devil is gone out. Whether he says gone out, the devil is gone. Because she has said this thing. She acknowledged the truth. She didn't argue and say, well, it's just one love. It's about everybody. We all the same, so forth and so on. And you shouldn't be saying that. Now, look at, look at what's here right here. Let's get to the scripture right here. You see what it describes her? The woman was a Greek, a Syrio Phoenician by nation. That's the part right there, right? Now, let's look this up right here. And let's now look up Canaan, right? We're going to look up Canaan, right? Canaan. All right, here we go, Canaan. Go look up Canaan, and we're looking at the verse right here, so we can just search and get to the the exact. Um, let's put grievous. All right, we put grievous. Oh, it's actually I before yeah, I before E except after C. That's how they used to teach us, right? Boom, there we go. We wanted to get to the exact verse. Grievous. Boom, right there. Matthew 15, 22. Now here in the Schofield Study Bible, it speaks about the Syrian Phoenician woman's daughter heal. Now, that we just read part of Mark chapter 7, verse 24 to verse 30. Here we are at chapter 15 of Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew. Right? Now, if we go to the verse before, let's just zoom in on the verse before. It says, Then Yeshua went thence, went there, and departed, or from there, right, but departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon, so it's the same place. So Matthew, Mateo, and Marco is both being witness to the same thing right here, right? And behold, but look what, look what Matthew says, right? Matthew says, and behold, a woman of Canaan. Uh-oh, we're talking about the same woman here? Let's read on here. A woman of Canaan. Remember, she was a Greek woman, a Syrio-Phoenician woman, by nation, by nationality. And behold, a woman of Canaan, Canaan came out of the same coast, Tyre and Sidon, and cried to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Adoni, O Adonai, O Adon, thou Ben Dawid, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed. With a devil, with a diablos, with a satan, a satan, a demon, basically, right? Or some type of bad condition, psychologically speaking. But he answered her not. Uh oh. Remember, Mark, right? We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Some people say that Mark is the oldest of it, but notice how they both are speaking on this same narrative right here. Now, the connection here is that the Israelites, asking the question, are the Israelites the Canaanites? We say that, no, the Israelites are not the Canaanites, point blank, period. But he answered her not a word. He didn't even answer her anything. She's saying, listen, my daughter is grievously, 
according to Mateo, right, according to Matthew's right, um, gospel, it's not just she has a devil, but she's grieved. I mean, she's vexed, vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. Now, would Yeshua do this to an Israelite, to a Judahite, to a Yehudi, a Jew? Even we the black Jew, no, he would not. And we have the testimony here in the Gospels. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples, Talmudio, right? His Talmudim, Talmudav, Talmudio, the Talmudim, his disciples came and besought him. They begged him, they beseeched him, saying, send her away. Now note that Mark doesn't bring this out right here. No doubt they both are telling the same witness of this. But note what Matthew brings out right here. The disciples, his Talmudim, they came and besought him and begged him, saying, send her away, for she crieth after us. She's bothering us. She's bugging us. Verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the Beit Yisrael, of the Beit of Israel. He says what? I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the bait, the bait house of Yisrael, the bait Yisrael or the beta Israel. Then she, then came she. After he said this, but note this right here. There's a distinction. She was a woman of what? My Canaan. She's a Canaanite. She's a Canaanite woman. Then Yeshua says right here in verse 24 of Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, I am not sent but to the lost sheep. To the, the lost sheep, the sheep that don't have a shepherd, the lost sheep of the Bait Yisrael. Then she came and worshipped. So that last verse, it basically proves there's a difference between the Israelites and the Canaanites. So the Israelites are not Canaanites. Point blank, period. Then came she, the Canaanite woman, who Matthew, Matthew says she's a Canaanite woman. In Mark chapter 7, verses 24 to 30, he says she's a Greek, she's a Greek, she's a Greek, a Syrian, a Syrian Phoenician woman. She came, or came she, and worshipped. Worship means that she prostrated, she bowed down. Like bowing down, you know, she bowed down. She 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 put her head down. She probably went down to the ground to his feet. She bowed down. Right? She worshipped him. She bowed down, saying, Adoni, Adonai, Adon, Adawan. She said, Lord, Sovereign Master, help me. She said, Help me. All right? But 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 he Yeshua. Adonai, our Adonai, our sovereign, our master, Robeinu, he answered and said, so she's, she's saying, Lord, help me. Yeshua, the Messiah, Christ, right, answered and said, it is not meet to say it's not proper, in that old 1611 King Jamesian English, it's not proper to take the children's bread. Remember the children, the Bnei Yisrael, the children's bread, and to cast it to dogs. So you see that distinction right there? See, see counterfeit was white Anglo-Saxon Canaanite Christianity. You got to get out of Canaanite Christianity. Right? We used to be calling it was Christianity, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant counterfeit Christianity. Well, now, 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 Yadin says, call it Canaanite Christianity. It is not meat, it's not right to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. So he's calling her a dog, her daughter a dog, all of y'all are dogs by comparison because there are certain symbolic animal types we have from the Ethiopic book of Enoch. This is where we get the animal types. You know, the lamb, the lion, the lion of Judah, you know, the dog, so forth and so forth. Boom. And she said, truth, Lord, wait, 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 hold on for a moment. She didn't neck roll and, 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 and big up herself. She didn't say, who you calling a dog? I ain't no biatch. No. She said, truth, Lord. She said, truth, Adon. Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat the, of the crumbs. Again, the crumbs. So the significant, though, both ones are witnessing. Matthew and Mark are witnessing the same incident, but there's no collusion. 
You know, collusion, like in law, collusion, like testimony being colluded. People kind of get together and they all plan what they're going to say. We see each one of them are testifying to what they witnessed, their witness of the significant incidences in Robeno's ministry. And we can see the key areas are one and the same, but it's not like it's the same exact thing, word for word, right? Context, we get a little bit more here. We get to find out that she was a Greek woman in Mark. She's a Syrian, a Phoenician woman. In Matthew, who some say was more Judaic, she, he calls her uh, a Canaanite. She's a Canaanite. So after Yeshua says that she, her daughter, because remember it was clear that her daughter was, was grievous, grievously, can you say grievously vexed with Diablos, with a devil, right? And then, then she bowed down and worshipped. She, she fell down at Yeshua's feet. You know, like when they say like the white people, some of the white people fall down at the Israelites' feet, so forth and so on. <laughs> you know what I mean? And say, what you saying? The truth. She said, truth, Lord. What you're saying is true, yet, and still. She said, yet, the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from their masters. So according to Matthew, she said, their masters. See, in Mark, it said, it said the, the crumbs, the dogs under the table eat the crumbs, you know, you know, you know the crumbs that fall off the table, the, the children's crumbs. They eat the children's crumbs. Here... She is testified as saying, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from their masters. Their masters. Not just the, the, the master, Adonai, Adon, ha, Adon, Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? The Lord Jesus Christ, as one would say in the other version, right? From their masters, Adonim, their master's table. Then Yeshua answered. What did Yeshua say? What did Yeshua say? Now, he called the woman and the, the my, 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 what's the dog? A dog is a female, right? A female dog is called a bitch, right? And, you know, a bitch. You know, I got a female dog. I said, bitch, come here. Bitch, go there, right? Yeshua then answered, right? Yeshua, then Yeshua answered and said to her, Oh, woman, though she's a white woman, she's a Canaanite, she's a Greek, she's a Syrophoenician, she's a Canaanite. <laughs> I said it twice because she's not an Israelite, right? Because Yeshua said, Right? He was not sent. Right? He's that physician that was sent to the lost sheep of the Beit Yisrael, of the Beta Israel. You know the Beta Israel, even a remnant of them over there who still maintain the name in, in, in Ethiopia. Right? Well, we are Beta Israel over here in the Americas and Caribbean after these 400 years. Huh? She, she says, right, truth. I'm a bitch, bitch, you know, she, she, she wasn't offended, she didn't necro, who you calling her, I just asked you to help me, don't you be calling me names, she acknowledged that what you're saying is correct, right, but, you know, the dogs, they do eat the crumbs that fall from the masters, the children are the masters, that's, what that's the point we're making, right, then Yeshua answered and said to her, oh woman, great is thy faith, even though I told you I'm not here for you, I'm not here for the Canaanites. I did not come to, for the Canaanites, for the house of Canaan or whatnot. I came for the children of Israel, right? For the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the beta Israel, right? She says, truth, Lord. Yeah, bitch, yeah, we are dogs. All that's correct. But even the dogs get some crumbs now. And Yeshua answered her according to Matthew, right, right here. Oh, woman, great is thy faith. See, that's great faith. She still knows that, well, regardless of all that, yes, with dogs, yes, you're you correct. But you're the one that's, that can do this. Cat, get this devil up out of my, my little white girl, my little white daughter. <laughs> all right? You ever wonder why they have so much demonology in their movies and their, their culture, the European, the Anglo-American culture? Think about it. All right? Exorcist. All right? Oh, woman, great is thy faith. Be it to thee even as thou wilt. Because you got great faith. Now notice something right here. This, this we're gonna get into this a little bit more, but just to kind of just point to the little bit right here is that the Savior came for his people, the loss of his people. Right? Other people wanted to get down with it, so to speak, right? He said, I'm not here for you. I, that's not why I was sent. Right? And you you know your dogs, right? 
you know, you're a dog, or, or you're a female, you know, you're a bitch, right? And I'm here to feed, feed the children, not to feed the dogs. And they said, well, well the dogs do eat some crumbs. And wow, great is your faith. Be it to thee even as thou wilt. You know, people think that like, like Christianity, you know, um, can, can that, Canaanite Christianity is magical. No, it's their faith. You know, I've seen this to the pro-black, pro-black folks. It's their faith, right? They have faith even though it's not for them, right? What did the master say? Be it to thee even as thou wilt. And outside the red letter, red letter, red letter. And her daughter was made whole. That means she was healed, right? From that very hour. Wow. You check that out right there. So now we went into this right here, this narrative here, both from Mark, right? Mark chapter 7, verse 24 to 30. And here, here, here from Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28 to show and prove that here, 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 let's go to Phoenician goddess. Now she talks some stuff about Canaanite Christianity, the God, Jesus Christ. She's talking about Kaiser Borgia. She's talking about Kaiser Borgia. Caesar Cesare Borgia. He is a Phoenician. He's a Canaanite. All right? All that stuff about Yeshua visited Lebanon in 29 AD, rah, 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 so on, converted to Christianity. But notice what you say Christianity. Canaanite Christianity. In other words, whitewashed Christianity. Wasp Christianity. Right? You can say Vaticanian, Vatican, all that kind of stuff they make up that you don't find nothing in the Bible. And the Bible says it's a seventh day is a Sabbath day. You know, the Pope and the Vatican say we can do what we want because it's not their book, it's not their thing. <laughs> right? It's their, they invented something. Right? They invent something in the name or similar, but not the same. Right? So right here, this right here proves that the Israelites are not. This is the error in what she says right here, where she puts the Israelite. Maybe she means the European Jews, like the Ashkenazi and some of the European Jews, because they come from a kind of different lineage. The Bible proves it. Many of their own scholars. I went to the Jewish um, um, encyclopedia, the library. They have this site up there. It's an it's a authoritative European Jewish kind of reference site. And they even talk about the Ashkenazi. Yeah, they're, you know, they're from this tribe. They're not from the Israelite tribe, but it's a religious thing. Right? It's boom. So we, we move on, right? So here she goes through the Hittite Phoenicians. Remember the Hittites? One of the tribes of Canaan, right? And then she says, white Lebanese are descendants of the Canaanites and are not related to Abraham. Uh-oh. We know that the Israelites are related. Now, we know also that some of the women, right, within the lineage of the Israelites were Canaanites. We, we, we know that. Some say that was Bathsheba on one hand. We know there's Rahab who was the harlot. But all of them were something like this Syrophoenician woman, this Greek woman, this Canaanite woman. They were great in faith. You remember Rahab? Remember Rahab the harlot that hid the spies and everything? Well, she comes into the lineage of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Right? And she comes into that lineage. She's one of the, the, the foreign, Gentile, other nations women. Right? Because if the woman believed, there was no problem, according to the scripture, to take their woman. But the men, no, 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 no. They would have to, you know, some of them were forbidden because, we, you know, like the, when we talk about the, who was in the Moabite and so forth and so on to the umpteenth generation. But here she says, white Lebanese are descendants of the Canaanites. But it's interesting, she says in caps, full caps, not related to Abraham, Noah, Ishmael, Hagar, or Arab. Notice that? Or our Ishmaelites. Remember, this is the same, this is the same one, right? That when she saw, we had a couple of videos and things out there speaking about the Canaanites in the Bible and linking the Canaanites to the white people, so forth and so on, from our history and research, so forth and so on. She was like, How do you know this? She was like, How do you know this? It was almost like a, a kind of like a scene of the scenes, the two scenes, two testimonies, the scene I just went through. Here she talked about the Canaanite Jews. And she's right, but she doesn't touch on this, that the European Jews are more linked with the Jebusites, right? The Jebusites. Right? Remember, the Jebusites even captured Jerusalem for a time until the time of David. But anyway, the Canaanite Jews, 
She says here, they have all, quote, legitimate rights to live, build, and settle in Israel and Palestine, the land of their Canaanite ancestors. You get that right there? You get that right there? In other words, they're not the seed people, but they're under the religion, but they are the seed people, the people who were evicted, evicted by Yahweh, hey, right? And this is where we began off with um, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 9. Right? When people say that, you know, the Canaanites or the Israelites, and they say, well, look, here's a Canaanite statue or idol, and it's called El. And here, over here, they, they, they call this one Yah or Yahweh or something like that. So what? If you read the Torah and you understand what you're reading, Yahweh hey, says that those people treated him wrong and he pushed them out of the land and brought in the children of Israel. So that means that Yahweh hey, is the landlord from the biblical scriptural perspective is the landlord, right? It's like you own a piece of land and you tell your tenants, well, you can live here, but don't do this, don't do that. And they keep violating and breaking those rules and doing a whole bunch of abomination in your land, you know, your, your residence. You can kick them out. Can you or can you not? Earth is Yahweh in the fullness thereof. But here she's speaking about the European Jews, but she correctly identifies that the European Jews are Canaanite Jews. Right? Even while at saying that they have all, quote, quote, legitimate rights. That means according to the legal system of things, right? We're still in the times, the end times of the Gentiles, the other nations other than true Israel. Right? of their Canaanite ancestors, a highly advanced and civilized, what she says, old European people credited for building ancient civilized cities of Baal, 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 Baalbek, Byblos, and Jericho between 12,000 BC and 10,000 BC. Now, I'm not gonna co-sign some of her dates right here. I don't know what, what chronology she's using, but she is pointing out some significant facts. Here she says the Canaanites equal the original Europeans. No, I would not agree with that. They equal the original white Europeans. But you have to remember that Canaan came from Ham, Ham. Ham was black. But if we study DNA, we have the recessive gene syndrome. There's a recessive. I mean, this is all proven by, I remember I read an article and they say, well, white people, as we, they call them, is fairly recent. I kept reading on and they said basically the same thing we're saying is that through the recession of genes, you know, comes white people. White people come from melanated, darker black people and from, biblically speaking, from Ham through Canaan. And she says Ashkenazi Jews and Sephardic Jews are the long lost descendants of the Canaanites. Phoenicians, Hittites, Carthaginians, and only blood relatives of the Lebanese. So what she's basically doing is admitting so much of the truth that is not mainstream. And maybe it'll never become mainstream among the Gentiles, but our people need to, need to know this truth. She said, Palestinians are Arabs, quote, unquote, from, from Yemen and Saudi Arabia. Notice what she says. The Palestinians are, quote, Arabs, end quote, from Yemen. So she already made a distinction between the Canaanite, the Indo-European white people, and some other people in that region who are not of them, but they're all kind of mixed up in the same area. So we need to know who's who on the face of the earthly plane. Palestinians are, she says, Arabs from Yemen, Yemen, and Saudi Arabia. And she says they are not related genetically to the civilized white Canaanites. The indigenous people of Israel, she says, quote, Israel and Lebanon. She means of Canaan and Lebanon. Now, there's some truth to, to at least that Canaan and Lebanon could remember. Scripture even says that Yahweh He, Ha Elohim, Ha Elohim, had dealings with all these other nations. All these other nations. Even of Edom. Told Edom and the Edomites to go take Seir. The children of Ammon, the children of Moab, they all got their inheritance. It's like Israel in that kind of related family of or relatives, related of other nations like Esau and the rest of them, right? Israel was the last to get and conquer, get its land, get its inheritance. And, it, and according to the scripture, the same Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, had dealing with all of them. He's the one who gave the, the, the Edomites the green light to, to take Seir. 
Also, he gave the Ammonites and the Moabites the green lights and said to the Israelites, you will not take of their land. Don't engage them in battle. Your battle is to get the Canaan, the Canaan land, because I'm evicting these Indo-European white people, so-called Canaanites. I'm, I'm not saying that they all were white in the white sense, but their genes all linked together. And this is interesting that she says that Palestinians are, quote, Arabs from Yemen and Saudi Arabia and are not genetically, right, are not related genetically to the civilized white people. So she's on this white thing, but a lot of the primary facts are right and accurate. When she talks about Israel and Israelite, it's, it's that three-card Monty shuffle. It's like how Herod, you remember Herod in the Bible? Remember Herod in the Bible? Herod in the Bible could be called the king of Judea because the Romans, he was embedded with the Romans. If you ever watched this um, series, BBC series, um, I, Claudius. I, Claudius is very interesting in many ways, but you even see the young Herod right there, and he was buddy-buddy with the royal family of Rome right at that time. And they're the ones who had put him as king of Judea, but the, but, but the ethnic... The ethnic Israelites, you know, we said the black and the brown people, we knew that he was only, he was like a, a, a fake Jew in the sense of he was in the religion, you know, you know, for political purposes. He wasn't a real believer. It's only like the whole kind of Zion, the modern European Zionist thing, in a sense like that, right? But the Canaanites and, Phil and Phoenicians, you go into that, they predate, now she gets into this predating kind of thing, Noah and his three sons, meaning the great flood. But, but what, what she's actually pointing to right there is there were, there were these other beings, these giants, the Nephilim, the fallen angels. That's the predating. So it was the Canaanites and Phoenicians who made covenant with the Nephilim and some fall beings. That's why if you look in a lot of their cultures, they are worshiping these like Nephilim or people call them the Anunnaki kind of types. And these were other beings that do not come from, we could say the, the human, you know, the human or uh, according to the Bible, you know, Noah and his three sons. Right? This is why when Noah said, you know, curse be Canaan, that was a prophecy right there. Right? Biblical Abraham, Abraham's genes, they go into this. Now, here's the, here's the interesting thing. How do we have Abraham's genes? Do you have the body of Abraham? Do you have the body of Abraham? How do we have, or, or rather, how do they have? See, here's where DNA can be very crucial in proving some things. But it's, it's what they call providence. The providence. In the chain of custody, the providence. In order for you to say, well, this is biblical Abraham's genes... What would they, you, have, you have to prove that you have something that is Abraham's. Like you got to have, Ab where is Abraham's body in order to have his genes? You can't just go to somebody who says, this is a thousand years later, you know. I say, well, Abraham is my ancestor. You're going to take my genes and make it the standard? What is the standard genes that they have for Abraham's genes? But let's just read on what they say. J1, M267, Y, DNA. He is the ancestor of all male Hebrews and Arabs. Note that. Check, check, Hebrews and Arabs. I.e., Abraham's son Isaac fathered the Hebrew Jews, and his other son Ishmael fathered the Arabs. But still the question still remains. It's a scientific question. If you can tell me about... Um, like if you say George Washington's genes, well, I'm, I think they have his body somewhere, and maybe they can zoom his body and take DNA, whatever. But if they say biblical Abraham's genes, well, where did you find the body of Abraham? You know, and where is the body of Abraham? You have to prove this to the scientists. From a scientist, it's not based on belief or faith, but this is science, right? So prove it. But it's interesting that she's making these distinctions, right? Similar is not the same. Then she goes into Abraham's migration to Canaan in 1700 BCE, which is close to, I think maybe 100 years, one, one way, you know, is a little off, but it's close to. Biblical scholars place the date of Abraham's migration to Canaan in the year 1700 BC. He settled in Hebron, Kebron, a city already inhabited by what she calls the old European really more correctly is the indo-european the indo-european right quote hittites 
Now, Hittite, the modern land of Hittite, is actually Turkey, what they call Turkey today, right? I.e., Canaan's indigenous people and ancestors. What she says? Canaan's indigenous people and ancestors of Ashkenazi Jews and Germans. No, Abraham's descendants, the Arabs and Hebrews, were not existed. She says, were not what? Existed in 1700 B.C. Well, there's some there's some truth to that, you know what I mean. But remember that Abraham was a black Syrian, but we proved that elsewhere. You go on. Biblical Jacob's gene is now now okay. This is again. How do we have Jacob's genes? Did you exhume a body that we know definitively was Yaakov's and get the DNA from there? But they say it's haplogroup J1 M two six seven Y DNA. The genetic, the signature genetic code of the ten lost tribes of Israel. But we, we have to get into the science on that. Because when, it might be true, but prove it. Right? They say, well, they did the research, the scientists. See, these are lazy people. We'll go through the research and even if we can do the DNA ourselves just to verify. Right? Trust but verify. Right? Here, lastly but leastly, right? Baalbek. Baalbek Temple Complex in Lebanos, Lebanon, was financed and built by the Phoenicians. And she's linking the Phoenicians with the Canaanites before 12,000 BP. Maybe she means BC. Maybe that was a typo. For God Baal, for God Baal, right? It is the oldest Masonic Temple Complex in the world, right? This is from Phoenician Goddess. Now, a point, I went through all of this right here because it's important to go through all of this right here, right? There's some very interesting points that are made right here, here, here. What was the time check? Okay, the time check right here. But this is just another proof that the Canaanites are not, right? And repeat, not the Israelites. I should have had a hard copy of this just to read through this. But basically it matches. Maybe she already knows about this or maybe she knew about this or got the link. Or we was talking about this at least back in 2000, all around 2008, 2009 when she came on the YouTubes. Right? But like I said, she was surprised that here a so-called Negro, right, a Judahite, a Yehudi, right, a black Yehudi, you know, a black Israeli, you know, that, that we, an Israelite, Hebrew Israelite, you know, Ethiopian Hebrew, the Israelites of Ethiopia, that we know about this, right? That we know about this. Another good book to get is a book written by my earthly father right here, The Biblical Antiquities of the Black Race. You know, you can actually, I think, on the Amazon, it's on the Amazon, available on the Amazon right there. You can see Ras, Iodonis, Tafari. We went through like a commentary and, you know, there's some very good notes right there, there, there. But he was researching this way back in the 60s, you know, had published the first part of it in Mohammed Speaks. Right, the Nation of Islam, the NOI newspaper, but it was kind of too heavy for them at that particular time, you know, because he was a visionary, and we know what happened to even Malcolm when when he caught that vision, right? But the biblical antiquities of the black, or he has here the Hamitic, the Hamitic race right here, right? So here, just pointing to some of this right here, 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 but just to sum it up, to say that the Israelites are not the Canaanites. More to come, more to come. Some of the other evidence that we didn't have right here to present, we'll have it to present, Yah willing, Yahweh, hey, you know, willing in the near, near future, B'Shem Yeshua HaMoshiach. Yes, I. Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom.